There's a lot of places you can create AI images, but right now I think the standout for free AI image generation is Whisk by Google Labs. It's web-based, no visible watermarks. It doesn't shut you down after two or three images and tell you to come back tomorrow if you want to do more. It's free. It has Nano Banana built in for combining or editing images while maintaining consistency. And maybe most importantly, it generates decent looking images. I mean, yeah, it's AI, so you're going to get duds, but overall it's a solid performer. Let's take a look at how to use it and what it does. When you get to the WISC website, I'll leave a link to that in the description, log in with your Google account that brings you to this page, click enter tool. Right here in the bottom center is the prompt box. We can just type in a prompt, choose the aspect ratio. You can go square, portrait, or landscape. We'll stick with landscape and then click the go button. And in just a few seconds, we've got two variations based on our prompt. Let's try something different. This time I'll use a prompt with a little bit more detail. Come down and hit the go button. This is pretty good. There's our dog in the gray suit at the mahogany desk. I think it got everything I asked for in the prompt and it even added this nameplate in front, Mr. Waffle CEO. I love that. That wasn't in the prompt. It just came up with that. I don't know that I'd call this 3D render. It looks more like a photo, but I still like it. Let's clear out this prompt. Go back and try another simple one. We'll just say a middle-aged man in a modern office. And by golly, that looks like a middle-aged man in a modern office. Now, if you're short on inspiration, you can come down here and roll the dice for prompt ideas. It'll drop something in the prompt box for you. We're going to go ahead and clear that out. This time we're going to go for an action photo. I'll click the go button on that. Looks like it followed our prompt pretty well. That's a bright red sports car drifting, wet city street, motion blur in the background, the wheels, and the car itself is nice and crisp, neon light reflections. I think it got everything. Let's try something with some text. We're going to go for an ice cream shop with a bench in front of it and a sign on the door that says free ice cream tomorrow. Looks like it put the bench in front on both of these variations. It got my little sign with the text and it's accurate. I'm going to go ahead and download this one. And let's come back up here and grab this guy. We'll download him and let's download her. And we're going to try and combine those images. So we can either click add images down here in the prompt box. And that opens up this left panel where we can add ingredients, I think is what Whisk calls them. So I'm going to drag and drop the image of this lady here in that subject panel. I also want the guy from the other image to be a subject. So I'm going to click this plus button out next to subject, drag and drop the image of the guy that we generated. And then for the scene, I'm going to drag and drop our ice cream shop. I'm going to say the man and woman are sitting on the bench with ice cream cones in front of the ice cream shop. Now over here, right in between the aspect ratio and the go button, we're going to click this settings button. We're not going to worry about the seed. We only need that when we're trying to generate an image that looks a lot like an image we already generated. Below that, we've got this toggle for precise reference. Let's go ahead and turn that off for now. And we'll come back down here and click the go button. With precise mode turned off, that puts you in what they call creative mode. That sends each one of the images we provided to Gemini that then writes a description of each of the images. Then all those descriptions are combined into a new prompt to generate the new image. The idea is it's supposed to capture the essence of the images you provided and create something like it. In both of the new images, there's some similarity to our ice cream shop and to our subjects, but it doesn't look like this woman and this man in front of this ice cream shop. If that's what we're going for, and I imagine most of the time it is, we're going to come back over to this settings button, toggle on this precise reference so that we'll be using Nano Banana. Then we can hit the go button and now it's going to use Nano Banana to try and combine these three images into one new one. And now what we've got is this ice cream shop with this man and this woman sitting on the bench in front eating ice cream cones. I'm going to go ahead and clear these out. I don't plan on using them anymore. We could uncheck the box and leave them there without using them as a reference, but I'm going to go ahead and get them out of these little panels. And then I'm going to shrink up this side panel. Now if an image isn't quite what you had in mind, hover over it and you'll get three buttons up here in the top left, animate, refine, and this little pencil edit thing. Let's click on that one. That opens up the image and the prompt that was used to generate it. I didn't give it a lot of details in this original prompt. Sometimes I don't really know what I want until I see what I don't want. So here I can add some details or make changes. So at the end, let's add on a crisp fall morning. And maybe I'm not crazy about her just staring off into the sun or whatever she's doing. So I'll add drinking a cup of coffee and reading a book. We'll hit generate. Now in both of these, she's got a cup of coffee, she's got a book. The leaves in the background are looking like fall. The one on the left that added a sweater, so I guess it's a little more crisp in this version than the one on the right. The one on the left also put some leaves there on the porch. So I think when we do the pencil button and change up the prompt and hit generate, I think it's using the same seed image because it's coming out very similar to that original image. Now another way you can edit an image is to click refine. And this is basically a chat editor using Nano Banana. 
Diana. So in our prompt, we can say something like, change his suit color from gray to green. We wanna click this settings button and make sure that we have the precise reference toggled on. Then click the go button and now he's in a green suit. I can keep going with other edits down here, but I realized that this blue tie and handkerchief aren't really working with the green suit. So I'm gonna click my original image there. Then I'm gonna click reuse prompt. That'll just copy this prompt down into the prompt box. Then I'm gonna make a few little changes here. Instead of suit color, I'm gonna say suit jacket and vest. And then instead of just from gray to green, I like the texture that it had before. So I'm gonna add back in that tweed and say from gray tweed to green tweed, and then change his tie and handkerchief from blue to brown with a satin texture. We'll click go, much better. Now, every time we edit, we are gonna lose a little bit of quality. So by combining several changes into one edit and going back to our original image, that should help us out. But we could certainly keep going with more edits. Let's say the dog is wearing round eyeglasses. Very distinguished, Mr. Waffles. Now we've made a few tweaks to this image and this scene, but we can also take our subject here somewhere else. Let's try put the dog in a boardroom, sitting at the end of the table, leading a meeting attended by cats in business suits. And there's Mr. Waffles leading the meeting. Doesn't look like anybody's happy to be there though. Let's leave Mr. Waffles to his business and go back out of here. You can also use Nano Banana in Whisk to edit an image that you didn't generate here. So let's expand this panel over here on the left. I'll drag in and drop an image of me in the subject spot. Down here in the prompt, we'll tell it what we wanna do. I'm gonna say the man is in a science lab working with beakers of brightly colored glowing liquids. I want to click this settings button, make sure, yep, my precise reference is still on. We'll go ahead and click the go button. There I am, and somebody should get me out of there because I'm sure I have no idea what I'm doing. Now, it kept me very consistent. I think I should be wearing some kind of a lab coat or something. So I've still got that image selected over here. I've got the little check mark there. So let's come back down to the prompt. I'll just add wearing a lab coat, hit the go button. That's a little better. Still got my blue shirt, but I've got the lab coat and I have all these colorful liquids going on all around me. I think one of these will be great to animate. So we hover over an image on the top left, you have this animate button, click that. And what animate does is turns this image into a video using Google's VO3. I'm gonna try something a little vague and just say things go wrong in the science lab in a hilarious way. And this is still free. You get five generations per month with VO3 on Google Wisk. If you want more than that, you'll need that Google AI Pro or Ultra plan that gives you access to flow. All right, let's see how things go here. Oh no, 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 no. This wasn't supposed to happen. Yeah, I'd say things went wrong there. I like my facial expression in that too. I mean, I think I need to see another one. Let's go back. We'll do this one, upper left, click animate. This time I'm gonna say things have gone horribly wrong in the science lab in the most hilarious way. Liquids bubble and splatter onto the man and he morphs into a bear. Here we go. Okay, I'm not so sure about the way I held out my hand and something just seemed to materialize there, but I turned into a bear. Now for downloading the video, click the download button. You can either download it as a video or as an animated GIF or GIF, whatever you call it. The images downloaded from Wisk do not have a watermark, but the videos do. Now, if you leave Whisk and come back in and you don't see all your stuff, come up here to the upper right and click this My Library button. You've got three tabs here, Projects, which is a way to organize your stuff. You can create a new project over here on the right. And then if you just wanna see all the images you've generated, go to the Images tab or all the videos, go to the Videos tab. And to keep going in an existing project, just click Open. It brings you back into the main image generation page in your project with all your images. And this is really handy. If you wanna download all the images you have in a project, over here on the left, click the hamburger menu and then click download all images. This will download everything in a zip file. Whisk is available in a lot of locations, but not everywhere. Here's the list. It's way too long to read, but you can pause it and see if your location's on there. And there's also a smaller list of places where Whisk Animate is available. That's the video part. You can get to those lists and all the FAQ by clicking the question mark in the upper right hand corner on Whisk. And then in the last paragraph, click the Help Center FAQ link. Now, as far as how many images you can create on Whisk in a single day or a single month, I assume there is some kind of limit, but I haven't found that listed anywhere. All I can say is that I have created a lot of images on Whisk, a lot in the same day, and it hasn't shut me down yet. I can't give you an exact number because I do tend to delete the dud images as I go along, so I'm not sure exactly how many I've created in a single day. But it seems to be pretty generous compared to other free tools I've used. There's some differences between Whisk and the AI image generation platform, 
platforms, the platforms tend to offer a variety of models and versions to pick from. In WISC, there's nothing to pick. Whatever model they have set in the background, that's what you get. The upside of that is it's simple. You don't even have to think about it. A downside could come in if they upgrade the model and you find that you liked the old one better than the new one. There's not really an option to change that. Right now in WISC, for a one-to-one -one aspect ratio, a square image, you're looking at a 1024 by 1024 resolution. At 16 by 9, the resolution is 1408 by 768, and WISC doesn't have any kind of upscaling tool or option. WISC also doesn't have in-paint or out-paint tools, presets, workflows, or some of the other bells and whistles that you'd expect on the paid AI image generation platforms. But if simple yet capable is what you want, WISC is a solid choice. And if you want to combine image generation with brainstorming, like give it an idea and have it start off by generating 15 AI images, check out another Google Labs experiment called Mixboard. It's also free, and I took it for a test drive recently. You can see that by watching the video that's on your screen right now. Hey, my name's Bob. Thanks for hanging out with me. I hope you found this video helpful or at least entertaining, and I hope you'll come back and join me for another video.